Hello, hello. Well, hello there. <laughs> hey, Jason, look at my lighting up. Hello, all. Um, Jason, do you want to pick out an icebreaker for today? I feel like you always have good ones. Sure. How about, since we all don't know each other and haven't done these icebreakers a hundred times, <laughs> don't we put in the chat something that we're looking forward to having for dinner in the next I don't know, week or month. All right. So the warm up question was so what are you looking forward to having for dinner in the next week or so? And then if you want to just drop your answer in the chat. And folks will be joining us throughout the hour. Um, There's a special guest on here tonight, Kate. Oh. Oh my my gosh, no. algebra no two teacher, my algebra two teacher is on this call. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, uh, we'll go ahead and get started in uh, about 30 seconds or so. Um, these orientations, people drop in and drop off according to their schedule. Sorry, I need a better uh, background, um, but we're really happy you're here this evening. Uh, we skipped our orientation in December because there was a lot going on with CS Ed Week. Um, so excited to kind of uh, onboard a few new members tonight and just kind of move forward. Um, yeah. So who's talking? That's a good call out. Um, <laughs> so my name is Kate. You've probably seen some emails from me. Um, what I do is really help make your membership experience valuable. So what that means is taking feedback, trying to make sure that it's easy to find things. Um, we're always trying to grow and improve at CSTA. Uh, my background is in nonprofit management. And before this, I was at Rotary International. Um, so uh, next up is Jason, who's on the call. Jason, who are you? Uh, hi, my name is Jason Bohr, and I'm the chapter relations manager here at CSTA for just about a year now. And I work uh, primarily with chapters and chapter leaders. We have 95 chapters across the United States, Canada, and the Philippines. And so I help coordinate those uh, 500 chapter leaders that help volunteer to run those chapters in uh, providing professional development and support for members. Before that, I was a high school computer science and English teacher in Northern California. Woo, awesome. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, so um, tonight we're going to go over a few different things about CSTA, but um, I will say it's such a great place to grow in terms of wherever you are in your professional development journey. Um, things are very strange and they have been for what the past 10 months or so, um, but what we've seen in this community is just, just amazing. So I'll go over a few things. Um, we'll show you a lot of different examples of web pages and resources. So hopefully, um, sorry, I'm trying to get a better uh, lighting situation. So hopefully you'll have some takeaways on uh, things you learned tonight, things to look forward to, um, as well as some some, neat, some sneak peeks on resources. Um, so we're going to go over kind of the following that's listed here, like what is CSTA about, what to expect with association, um, some benefits of being a member, whether you're a free member or a paid member. Um, Jason's going to talk about chapter membership and what that means and uh, what not to be afraid of with that. Uh, again, I'll show you some resources, how to get engaged, um, you know, as you kind of learn more. And we're just excited you're here. Um, all right, uh, and also just a few housekeeping things is um, if you have to drop on or off, no worries, is this will be recorded and shared out. Um, we know your time is valuable. Um, if you have questions throughout this presentation, um, feel free to drop them in the chat um, saying, hey, Kate, can you slow down? Or that doesn't make sense. Or can you zoom in on something? Um, love to make sure that your experience uh, is a good one tonight. Um, and then otherwise, we'll try and keep it under uh, 40 minutes, so you have some time back in your day. Uh, usually, that's that's what our goal is. 
All right, so what is CSTA? We uh, have been around actually for about 20 years, but we've kind of reinvented ourselves in the past couple of years around um, really focusing in on uh, being an equitable association, pushing our teachers to kind of put that at the forefront um, and really uh, every program that we do, we put it through that lens of equity. Is it fair? Are we reaching underserved populations and um, really trying to grow as an association? We came out of, um, I get this wrong every time, but ACM, the, Jason, can you correct me if I'm wrong? It's the, no, what is the association, <laughs> the association of computing machinery. Thank you. Every time I want to like make up some something else that it stands for. Um, but yeah, that's where we kind of came out of as a special interest group. Awesome. So I'm going to show a few things I should be sharing my screen. Um, but kind of what to expect with your membership is uh, the nice thing about CSTA is it's what you kind of put into it. We know you have flooded inboxes right now. You're either managing teachers or working with teachers and it's hard to balance. You're probably multitasking now, I get it, is um, what to expect from us right off the bat is we're gonna be sending you kind of communications with resources. We're gonna have monthly, um, a monthly events available for you for PD. We have support networking through our uh, chapters as well as we're an association that offers grants, stipends, scholarships to help you kind of get the recognition you deserve. Um, so really we're a place to kind of grow and to share information with your network. All right, and kind of what to expect elsewhere with your membership is uh, we're a small but growing team, but we have um, volunteers all over the world for an international association. So um, really great networking uh, kind of opportunity. Awesome, so I mentioned you'll be getting um, information from us. Uh, no fear, everything we send out has purpose. Um, so I'll break down um, a couple of the communications you'll receive, um, but if you haven't already, you probably got a, you know kind of a welcome email how to log in and uh, kind of use your profile, we'll talk about that. But weekly we send out a CSTA, um, kind of a weekly digest of events that are going on regionally, as well as a couple information uh, of things that are going on at the national level. We've had CSTA for, I think, as long as CSTA has been around. Um, so you might recognize that if you're a member coming back. Uh, the voice is a communication we get monthly. Um, these go out to all members and it's usually the first Saturday of the month and um, really great communications on, hey, what programming's going on? And maybe I just wanna read down of what events I need to participate in, or maybe there's a summit I'm interested in. Other communications, we will send you information about conference as well as special opportunities around scholarships. Uh, but other than that, it's broken into if you're in a certain program. So what I mean by that is if you're part of a chapter, you'll get a chapter, you'll get chapter information about what's going on near you. Now, since we are in a pandemic, um, you can join a chapter that isn't necessarily where you're at. If you're in California, there are like 10 chapters <laughs> you could join and get information on from all those different chapters on events in PD, right? So I think we'll talk about this, but it's an opportunity to kind of shop around and get your needs met. Um, yeah, and then otherwise I'd like to point out is that we do have a Twitter, uh, Facebook, and uh, actually an Instagram that is growing. <laughs> um, but I usually look to uh, Twitter for information from our members as well as uh, from CSTA. Awesome. So I don't know how many of you have logged into your account yet. Um, but the exciting thing is, is actually this uh, kind of leads to a lot of resources that are coming out with CSTA. So I'm gonna break away from my presentation real quick and show you the homepage. If I'm going too fast, please call me out. Is, so I went to csteachers.org and um, I'm just gonna show the member login if you haven't poked around before. All right. And always, if you forget your login information, you can click forgot login. But most likely, your login information is the email that we contact you at. All right, so we'll see if this works. I have a bunch of different <laughs> logins. Uh, I want to show this because uh, I'm a visual learner, and I want to show you kind of the value of logging in. Um, so this is where that difference is. We have different types of memberships. Um, basic and free is when you log in is this is kind of a home page of some really valuable information. Um, 
Two things I want to call out here is one, editing your profile. Why this is important um, is, uh, we'll go here, is if you want to change your profile picture, you click change. Of all these tabs, pay attention to professional. And so here's the takeaway of me showing this is we are developing a resource of discussion boards that you will be grouped into by your grade band. And so you updating and saying, hey, I'm a teacher that uh, you know teaches within a certain band. You telling us this is you'll be connected automatically with uh, a group of educators all over the world to be able to share information, share resources. And that's launching, uh, oh my gosh, within the next like five weeks. So really excited, wanted to point this out. Um, but back on this profile page here is a couple different resources. My favorite to point out is right off the bat, you get $100 in AWS credits as a CST member. You don't have to pay anything to already be starting your professional journey with us. Awesome. So other information on here is kind of links to how to contact us, but a lot is external or on our plus page. So kind of navigating back, I showed you kind of how to log in, how to update information. Um, if you're ever lost, uh, you can always contact us at membership at csteachers.org. Otherwise, click here um, under contact CSTA National. Awesome. All right, let's see what's next. All right, so back on this page, um, I'm going to view the events calendar. So CSTA, we have events at the national level as well as regionally, and this will take a minute to load. But how I got to this page, I was logged in, but you don't have to be logged in. You can go under about CSTA and click events. Um, my favorite thing about this is, like I said, we're in a pandemic. So being from a certain region doesn't really apply, right? I would encourage you to look at this calendar and you know, being mindful of your time and saying, hey, there is an event that seems interesting, right? There was, uh, you know, we had a summit uh, last weekend um, or actually two weekends ago, we had a summit, um, as well as there's lots of different professional events going on at the regional uh, level as well. Well, a PD provider will come in and talk and do a workshop. And Jason will talk a little bit about this. Something I do want to point out is, um, we'll talk about this later, but we have a virtual conference every year that's two days full of PD. Um, and a swag box, <laughs> um, but actually coming up in March, so you can skip ahead and look at what's to come, is we actually have an equity summit. So kind of talking about how to um, apply the practice of being equitable in your classroom, in your district, um, and really having a takeaway to create an action plan. So you can say that I am you know, putting equity in action as a CS teacher advocate. So I wanted to point out, you know, navigating your profile, navigate, navigating um, this uh, calendar. You can also see it in a couple different views. Awesome. All right. So I kind of talked about a couple different things here. I'll go back to our presentation here, but lots of information to digest. We talked about going over your profile. Here's where kind of some of these things come together because you might have heard about plus membership or maybe I should upgrade to plus is we're not trying to sell you anything, don't, don't worry, um, is CSTA, uh, actually we have free membership, which is really unheard of um, because we know teachers don't get paid enough. Um, so if you're looking for PD, you're still gonna get so much PD for free or even discounted if that's something that you can afford. Um, I wanted to show that we do have kind of a, another level, um, which is $50 um, annually. And that those funds, half of those go to support um, our equitable programs. Uh, but this is just something to think about. I'll show you the page about what plus benefit really means, but um, it has a value of uh, at least $450 to $500 annually. And I will say the main kind of push for people is when you become a PLUS member, you get a significant discount on conference, on PD programs, on summits. Um, there's just a lot of additives there. Um, so something to think about is we'll check out the PLUS page and maybe there's some PD down there that's worth it to you. Um, I will say we have webinars on PLUS benefits so you can pop in, see if it's of interest to you. Um, but we get a lot of really great feedback on uh, what we provide. So happy to take any questions about this, but wanted to kind of lay out and look at the difference um, you know, on your journey and if there's PD that you're interested in. 
I'll go ahead, ahead and show um, some of those plus benefits. The, you can see them, anyone can see them if you go under membership, CSTA plus benefits. Is they're kind of like little cards. And the way to define them, I would say, is significant free or trials of PD and digestible information for you to use on your own time. Um, the AWS credit, you get $200 in credit if you're a plus member. Um, you know, 90 days free for Pear Deck. You get access to all of our conference videos from last year and the year before. Um, we had a teaching summit, you get access to those videos, you get a free kit with fidgets. So it's really a way to kind of pick around and see, hey, what PD am I interested in? And how can I invest in myself? Um, and, you know, maybe your district will pay for that $50 a year. Um, I will say one of my favorite on here is Nearpod. You get four months for free using Nearpod. So a way to kind of entice and enhance your presentations, as well as, you know, free uh, trials to different um, engagement programs, depending on what grade band you teach. So I showed that. Um, I wanted to point out two things. Um, one, if you're a basic member, you can get those $100 credits. Is Even if you're not logged in, I'll go ahead and log out here, you're able to access quite a bit um, as a basic member. And I wanted to point out one of my favorite resources, which hopefully you've, you've checked out, is if you go under CS teachers and uh, CS standards and resources, is there's a lot of resources um, actually with the standards if you wanted to check out. But we have a full page on virtual teaching resources, which hopefully in the next, you know, or however amount of time we'll <laughs> find some kind of normalcy. But if you're still trying to figure out a balance as we all are, is here's some really great resources that um, have nice filters on them if you're looking for curriculum, self-care, how to teach about COVID, um, really just depends on if you are looking for more information to kind of um, try out something new in your classroom. The other thing I'll point out that's free is our professional development opportunities is this is a page where we've had an independent committee review professional development opportunities. And again, we have a filter on, does it cost me anything? Um, maybe I'm in a certain grade band and you can click on a card and it was assessed by our team that, hey, this is a great opportunity. This is what it offers. Here's the cost and I can go right to the website. So right off the bat, um, two resources you can use for free. Last thing I wanna point out is I mentioned and you might've seen on the plus page is there was something called Pluralsight. I don't know if anyone has checked out Pluralsight before. Um, I like to think of it as a, a resource directory of videos. Um, Jason, while I pull this up, do you wanna talk about how you've checked out Pluralsight before? Or not? <laughs> <laughs> having a hard time getting unmuted there sure uh no i like kate's usually referred to this as the netflix of i'm i'm trying to be better because i don't think that's what they want <laughs> me to call it <laughs> but it is uh has hundreds thousands of uh video resources in here that, that sort by any number of features uh, i checked out a couple just on binary just to find some cool videos and tips and tricks because that's always kind of a thing uh, sometimes in classes. It can be fun too. So uh, it's a great place to start if you're looking for some self-paced uh, asynchronous type learning. And there's a, a vast library curated here. Oh my gosh, it's, it's huge. Um, so I think this is something where it's a plus benefit, uh, plural site. Yeah, again, with the kind of like the Netflix of resources is right off the bat, what's free is we have all these different channels that are aligned with kind of prepping for the uh, CS practice exam. So under each one of these channels um, has all these different courses that are, you know, refreshed annually. Um, of course, my computer is going to take a minute to load, but refreshed annually on um, how do I get up to date on, you know, maybe I'm I'm practicing for the, you know, the practice exam, I need more information is there's just an abundance here. Um, otherwise, if you're interested, there's like 6,000 courses on here. Um, the majority you do need to upgrade, I think, but if you're interested in this platform, it's very valuable, I think, with 
plus membership, you get it for like $100 a year and it's worth like a couple hundred. So let me know if you have questions. I just wanted to show you an example of, um, you know, it's kind of like Pandora's box of plus membership is if you're interested in one particular thing, most likely we have a significant discount or it's free. So I would check it out um, through us and save yourself some, <laughs> save yourself some money. Um, but yeah, going back, let's go ahead and talk about chapters. Um, Jason, I'd love it if you could, I think one, maybe talk about like your experience as a chapter person and then kind of go into like maybe some of the benefits. Yeah, so the, the heart of CSTA are, are these local chapters. It's one thing to be connected nationally to the organization, but with over 20,000 members, hard to get that individualized experience, especially at your local or regional level. So like I was saying before, we have 95 chapters, most of them in the continental United States. So likely there is a chapter in your area, uh, unless you live in Minnesota or Montana, in which case I would love to help you start a chapter because those are the only two states we don't have a chapter in yet. Uh, and we, we pride ourselves on these three pillars of chapters here, building community, because we know that the CS teacher is often isolated, siloed at the high school level, often the only CS teacher on your campus. And then the middle school and elementary school levels, you know, having to juggle 8,000 other subjects. So this, uh, so your chapter can become your PLC for computer science. Uh, chapters also are a way to provide localized professional development and support. So when there's national CSPD weeks going on across the country in the summer that you might attend, your CSTA chapter can provide localized support and our uh, partners will come in and provide professional development at your local chapter level. And they, I see them all across the country week in and week out at the chapter meetups. Uh, and we also have that third, uh, you know, establishing operational foundations, that's the connection to the national uh, CSTA organization. So that's how we're able to provide chapter support that then chapters can provide that support to members. So uh, really, if you haven't had a chance to get connected with your chapter, highly recommend it. it. It's not, there's no, you're not committing to a certain number of meetings per year or anything like that. Most chapters, in fact, all chapters that I know of right now are meeting virtually on a Zoom, just like this, or in a Google Meet, or, you know, some other platform. They meet, you know, once a month, once a quarter, and it's a way, like I said, to connect to your local CS educators, maybe someone at the school uh, next door in the same district, or maybe in a, in a neighboring county or on another side of the state, we don't know. Uh, they usually send out some correspondence. So you would see, you know, I would say a couple more emails a month. You know, I don't see any chapter spamming people with emails, uh, but you know, we're passing on information to chapter leaders who are then passing it on to their chapter members. So it's a good way to make sure that, that the information gets out to the people who need it, the teachers in the class. Uh, Kate, were you gonna pull up how to locate your chapter? If not, I can drop a link in the chat. Yeah, I'll go ahead and pull that up. Oops, spoiler. I'll drop the link in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Um, so I'll on our site, this. yeah, there's a chapters tab on our main page. And if you go on that drop down, you'll see find your chapter. And I would say the best way to search here, if you know the name of a chapter, you could type it in. But to me, the best way to search is to put your two digit state abbreviation in there and then click the search button and all the chapters in your state will come up. So Indiana has one chapter that runs statewide. They also have regional hubs. So once you become a member of that chapter, they'll ask you, you know, what part of the state you live in, and then you can connect with more, even more localized, you know, so you're already connected to your state chapter, but then you can also connect to your, you know, south or north or west or east region. And that's how Indiana has set up their CSTA chapter. Like Kate was saying before, in larger states like California, there are several chapters you know, that are you know, regional based on uh, geographics. Same with, with a state like New York that has so many teachers. So uh, like I said, pick, pick your state. And if you're in the New York area, you can, as Kate said, you can join more than one chapter. So I, I, I recommend joining a couple chapters nearby 
just so you can kind of get a taste and get a feel for what they're offering. Right now in this virtual environment, you know, we're not we're not limited by where how where we have to drive after school or you know hours in the car one way or another. So I would suggest joining one or two chapters that are you know in in your state or neighboring states and checking out a couple of the meetups that are offered. Like I said, almost all the chapters I know of right now are offering some form of virtual meetup at least monthly, some you know every other week, some once a quarter. That's not at least monthly, but uh, but once you're connected with your chapter, you'll see an easier way even to connect with CSDF. It's like like we've been saying, we have our national events that you know the conference was attended by close to three thousand people last year. The summits are uh, you know three four hundred people. This is a way to connect with a group of like twenty or thirty people and really dive in and get resources that you need and support that you, you know, and meet some new fun people. Yeah, awesome, thanks Jason. And um, I always like to point out, cause I was at Rotary International is if you're afraid of kind of that structure of, um, you know, showing up for so many meetings or having dues is, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Jason, but like most chapters don't have dues, right? I don't know of any chapter right now that collects yeah. dues. So, so if you're, anything, you're it's, getting more information and, um, you know, cause I think that's something is like, how many meetings do I have to go to? Or like, if there's conflicting things is if anything, um, you know, you maybe get three new resources to implement in your classroom or district each time you go to a meeting. And I think that resource sharing and PD is, is really important. Um, and you can also start a chapter. I think Jason also mentioned that. So thanks so much. Um, I'm going to keep us on track because uh, I'd love to get us out a little early. It's nice to have that time back is, you know, thinking about you and CSTA is uh, we know you're busy is finding out where your place is. And so my my best tip is to figure out what are your needs right now? Um, you know, you came to this call for a reason. You came to join CSTA is like, do I need more PD? Am I looking for a networking? Am I looking um, to maybe support my students, right? Can I start an honor society? We'll talk about that in a little bit is figure out what your needs are and check out our events page, check out the benefits page, check out what resources are available and reach out to us because this is where we're here for and there are a ton of other people that are doing the exact same thing as you right now they're in the situations where maybe they can't get funding for pd they're trying to figure out how to prep for the ap exams right they're trying to figure out um so many different moving parts of this complicated world world we're in and so that's that's my takeaway here is uh down the line if you're interested in volunteering and perhaps um you know Another capacity is we have volunteer roles all the time available on our engage page. Um, just to show you where that's at is underneath about CSTA um, and then engage with CSTA is if you're ever interested in helping review um, award applications for students or teachers, um, you know, looking over proposals for conference at workshops is if you don't think you have a lot of capacity is you might have an hour every other month to give back and you can put that on your resume and you can meet other really interesting folks. So uh, really great opportunities out there. Um, kind of focusing in on other things we have available is I'm happy to say is uh, we actually have a couple different programs to help support um, <laughs> uh, kind of recognizing teachers and students. So I think one call out is, this is a pre-COVID picture, but we have a computer science honor society program. So if you are a teacher that's interested in this, um, definitely apply. It's so cool. Um, I help kind of with the program, but it's helping encourage um, students who have a passion um, or an interest in CS. Um, and it's an accessible honor society. So you might have heard of the National Honor Society or other ones is um, this one has a lower GPA to, to enter. There's a lot of flexible things in which you can create kind of programming for your students. Or maybe you have a tech club already is we have funding available for you to do something for CS Ed Week, um, different grant opportunities. And the main focus of the society is to kind of give back 
and do service. So that's CS for good theme, CS for social justice, and thinking about, um, you know, getting these, these kids thinking about their next step. And uh, so we have this society, if you're interested, um, I think Jason might drop a link to it. But other thing I wanted to point out right now is we actually have a Teaching Excellence Award open. So if you're even thinking about applying, please do it. I'll show you the page where things are. And so this is an opportunity for you to say, hey, I'm a teacher that has invested in kind of reaching all students, trying to get them to, you know, learn about CS. Is this Teaching Excellence Award is open now through February 8th. Um, we love it when people apply for it. You, there's all sorts of, we have up to 30 uh, slots for recognition this year. Um, a lot of them have cash prizes or stipends associated with it. The main ask of this uh, award, it's in a couple different parts, is to think about how have you encouraged underrepresented students, right? And that can mean a lot of different things, right? Depending on where you teach and who you teach. And um, we have teachers who've won who've taught for one year and have taught for 20 years. So uh, give this a look. Jason, I don't know if you could drop a, a link to this in here, but it is Already a has. really, oh, Jason's on it. But yeah, that is, I wanna mention that because it's open for like another two weeks. Great, all right. So getting us back on track here, uh, we talked about the Honor Society. We talked about how to get a little bit engaged is uh, we also have committees available. If you're ever interested down the line or have expertise, this is a really great way to give back. And plus we, um, we treat our committee members really well. We have swag for them as well as it's a great place to kind of grow um, professionally as well with, um, you know, of your peers. Awesome, so, uh, so, so some things that uh, we really wanna point out is conference this year will be virtual again. Um, it's going to be the 14th through the 16th of July. And um, the great thing about this virtual conference is you can stay in your pajamas, right? But we also give away swag boxes. So swag boxes being, um, you know, some fun trinkets and things in there, but uh, two days of professional development. Um, Jason, do you want to say anything about conference this year and maybe a takeaway or two? Uh for those who were able to join us last year, you'll know that uh, we were able to expand offerings greatly in this virtual format. So that's something we're really excited about. Uh, there will be scholarship opportunities available starting next month. Uh, we'll be sharing the links on how to apply for one of those scholarships if your district doesn't have funding. And we're excited again to, to bring even more content and connect even more people like uh, we said earlier, we had 3,000 people at the conference last year. We're looking to go even bigger this year and really you know, provide that space for CS teachers to connect and to get quality programming. Yeah, and I will say um, we have a promotion going on now is, you know how I mentioned the PLUS membership earlier is um, if you, uh, let me see if I get this right, is usually if you're a PLUS member, you get, at least a $50 discount on conference. So it kind of helps for your benefit to be a plus member before registering. Um, now, if you're a plus member and you register for the conference before Saturday or Sunday, I believe it is, you save an additional $10. This is the lowest registration price right now. And then you get a really nice swag box in two days of PD, um, hundred hour, hundreds of hours of content, and then being able to watch that content later. Um, just some really great speakers last year. I know we're kind of lining things up for this year, but yeah, I really wanted to give that a call out is um, definitely worth it and uh, see if your district can kind of support you and some other CS teachers and, you know, make it a, a fun event. Um, this is just a page showing of one of the plus benefits is, hey, maybe I want to go check out um, some of the videos from last year's conference. I missed it is everything is organized in a really easy way to use. To, to, if I can speak, um, to be able to navigate what kind of session I'm looking for, or perhaps um, Clark is showing, one of our members is showing, uh, I actually have it back here from our swag box. We have, we had a very nice uh, <laughs> mug. Um, but yeah, really great, um, great time, great videos, and uh, hope to see you there. Awesome. So we had some slides on CS Ed Week. We actually have some of those videos available, but to kind of tie in 
is we have grants available during CS Ed Week for honor society programs, um, as well as all sorts of PD. Um, so really great kind of month. Uh, two things is we actually have a job board now that's live. I'll go ahead and show that here. So I'm on csteachers.org under membership. And I know this is a lot, Jason's dropping things at you in the chat, but um, this is all here. When you, when, when you rediscover it again and when we email you about it again, is we have a job board that's free to use. So in the sense, if you're trying to find a job, you can either apply for jobs directly on this site with a login, that's your CSTA login, um, or it's gonna take you to an external site. If you're interested in sharing and posting a job, we have that opportunity as well for um, employers. Um, and I think our rates are under here, but um, if you want to post a job, I would say, hey, send this link to maybe someone at your district level. Uh, but yeah, we have this. And then the last thing I wanted to note is we have a discussion board um, coming. And so be sure to update your grade band information. You might be getting an email um, from us in the next week in which if you update your grade band and profile within uh, the next seven days, we have a gift card incentive. So um, great to get that information updated. Uh, Awesome. Takeaways is if anything you've learned here today is that all these resources are still going to be here when you need them. And we're going to continue to grow and support where you're at. Um, I will say CST is a really great environment in terms of you might have met someone that you worked with at a workshop is um, it's a little bit of a smaller world than you think sometimes a lot of our volunteers will have intersected before or worked um, closely and um, it's nice kind of creating that community so as a next steps you know check out your profile check out the events page um, maybe attend one or two events in the next four weeks if you can right we know there's a lot going on in the world but investing in yourself is really important and perhaps you can find other CS teachers that are going through the exact same thing that you are. Um, other things is check out the free resources that virtual teaching page is our resources you can share out, right? And help other teachers. Um, Jason, is there anything you'd like to add as any, any takeaway or next steps? Uh, no, I know it's a lot that we put here for you. I know That's some so people much. like to pull, pull all the links from the chat. If, don't forget, if you click those little three dots mm -hmm. uh, right above the type message here on the right, you can click those three dots and save the chat. And that'll save all those links for you. Uh, yeah, not to mention, oh, not to mention, there'll be a follow-up email with, with many of the links contains. Like, yeah. Kate, they're not going Wait, anywhere. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to bust in here, but what was the thing you said about the three dots and saving the chat? So right uh, in your Zoom, right above where it says type message here, so the right, you'll see three little dots. Do you see those, Jen? No, I'm on if a you click... Chromebook, so it doesn't. Oh, okay. It must be. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I should have just assumed I'm on a Chromebook. Not yeah, it's always the Chromebook. Always the Chromebook. Uh, no worries. Well, the good news is, is usually the next week I share out um, the recording and a bunch of links to things. So you can always follow up with us there um, or in some of the emails mentioned here. Don't worry, you'll find us and we we continually have a lot of resources to share out. Um, and this is recorded so you can look back at it. You can attend the next one if you want to find out more information. Um, my takeaways is I would definitely sign up for the Equity Summit in uh, March. I would check out Teaching Excellence because maybe you or another teacher is interested in it. If anything, you could be getting some stipend money to help support you as a person and teacher. Um, and, you know, look out for opportunities to kind of learn and grow. We're happy you're here. Um, I think we made it just at 40 minutes. <laughs> I made my goal. Um, but I want to pause here and see if there were any questions that I could answer um, on this call before we wrap up. And feel free to drop them in the chat. I think Jason's done a great job of following up with any. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Um, yeah, Jason's the the link master. Koozie. Yep, I will I will say that Swagbox is very good <laughs> from conference. Um, super fun and great way to kind of uh, you know develop yourself professionally. Awesome. Well, uh, this is our last chance to check in. We'll go ahead and follow up with you next week. 
And I think from here, we're going to close up early. We appreciate you being here. You know, it was a lot of information, but uh, CST has got your back. We are here to support you wherever you are and really appreciate your time today. Um, Jason, thanks for your time and being the, the link master. And everyone have a, a great evening or day wherever you are. And uh, we'll, we'll see you soon, okay? All right, All right. Thanks, everybody. thanks, Kate. Thanks, Jason. Bye, Clark. Bye. Hey, thanks, great job. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Kelly. All right, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Thanks, everyone.